How you going? I'm Terence, and welcome back to Rusted Iron Ranch. Uh, today we're going to be working on a uh, Ferguson implement. Um, I've previously I did a little video on this on Instagram a while ago, um, and just because I don't think a lot of people know about these, um, although it is an incredibly effective way to cut firewood. So the Ferguson implement we're going to be using today is the uh, saw bench. Um, I do think the, I believe Ferguson actually called it the cordwood saw or something like something along those lines. This is an actual Ferguson implement. This one's made in Australia. Uh, sorry. Yep. Yep. Made in Melbourne. Um, and the tractor, which you haven't seen yet. No, you haven't seen yet. I mentioned, I think I mentioned it in one of the um, 135 videos. Um, this is a, so a grey Fergie, so this is a TED20. Um, so originally um, the TED, the difference is they have an extra shroud, whoops, sorry, they have an extra shroud over the intake and exhaust, um, and that was because they wanted to be able to run on a, um, higher flash point fuel like uh, your kerosene and all the rest of it so you need to be able to preheat the fuel and vaporize it more so I think they even ran on like paraffin um, something along those lines um, so yeah that's the TD TED uh, so it would have had originally and it still does maybe yeah I changed the tank that's right um, the two-part tank so uh, start on petrol run on caro so you can start because uh, petrol has a lower flash point, um, it'll start more easily, and then um, you can flick over to pet, uh, kerosene, which I believe uh, back in the day would have been a lot more cost effective than um, petroleum was. This is a six volt tractor still. Um, I'm gonna change that at some point. It's a little bit of a pain, that battery. Six volt batteries aren't the most common. Um, you can still get them, but um, it's just a little bit of a pain. Uh, it might have some juice still on it, we'll see when we get to that part. Back to the saw bench. So, I took this apart the other week with my dad. We took the um, saw blade off and I've had the saw blade um, sharpened in town. Um, they've done a really good job. Um, it looks really good. I didn't go tungsten or anything like that. It's just a, still the original um, steel and it's just been um, set and um, sharpened and it looks really sharp. Um, the other thing which I'm going to do first is uh, this is flat belt driven so you don't just put it on the back of the tractor and then away you go um, you also have to use um, the flat belt pulley um, here so that goes on your PTO shaft bolts on four bolts onto the back of the tractor stays fixed um, and with the um, saw benches they also use the top of the flat belt pulley as the top um, link so when it lifts up, it kind of lifts up and folds into the tractor rather than lifting up from your normal top link up here um, like any normal three-point linkage. Um, so you still use your lower links, lower links, and the top link is now on top of the, um, the flat belt pulley. Uh, so I bought this a couple of years ago because I wanted one to cut firewood. Um, and I like all the Ferguson implements and uh, I got it in this condition and it's, it's in really good nick um, but also it's a off. also uh, it has um, had a coat of paint and the new wood put on it um, but yeah the, sh the uh, guarding's in really good nick apart from there's some rust holes down the bottom but it's really straight like it hasn't been abused or anything like that uh, so yeah it's back to the flat belt so it runs off the flat belt um, and my flat belt is damaged at the minute. Um, so this is the flat belt I'm using. And uh, when we moved here recently, uh, I was taking the tractor off the truck, and I don't know why. Um, it must have got caught on something. But um, with the Ferguson's, you can't just lift. Um, you can't just lift the three-point linkage without the PTO going around, which is a pain. Um, so you have to have the hydraulic pump um, obviously runs it runs after the clutch and it runs on the same um, we'll call it circuit as the um, the PTO so to use your three-point linkage you have to have your PTO in gear 
And with an implement like this, not only does it go up on your linkage, but it also drives off the um, PTO. So luckily you always have, this as your adjustment in here. So you can tighten this nut and it moves these two distances away from each other. That'll become more apparent when I put the, um, the belt on later. Um, so I had that loose, cause you have to have it loose to go up and down all the time, but I somehow um, it got stuck or caught on something. And as it was lifting up, um, it flipped the belt and absolutely destroyed the coupling. Uh, so this one we'd previously tediously taken it apart and um, fixed it although I have a new one over in the shed so that's the first job I might yeah I might take this back across to the shed I mean, might even set you up and you can, um, you can see how we join the flat belt back together then we'll grab some tools there's not much there's two bolts three bolts sorry two bolts of the shroud nut that holds the the collar on and the um the blade and that's about it and we'll put some fuel in it hopefully get it started it usually starts um if it's got any if it's got any power in the battery not enough to um, start it i can usually crank start it from cold um so it starts really easily um they're also real they're i think they're lower compression these models anyway this one would be low compression because it's it's pretty uh it's pretty worn out. It does need it does need some work. When when I get it going, it'll be running on three and a half cylinders. And, um, yeah, coughing and spluttered a little bit. Um, it might run on four cylinders, but it still runs drives. And for the minute, until I get into this one, I'm going to um, go through it. Probably give it a bit of a rebuild. Um, until I do that, all it's doing is running the saw bench, and it does that pretty well for me. Okay, uh, let's take this across the shed. We'll join this back together um, and we'll bring the blade and some tools back and we'll put this uh, saw bench back together. Okay, we've got the flat belt on the bench. Um, first off, I'm just going to try and unpick all these. Now the link's right. Um, I know the link's right because it worked previously. Uh, I'm just going to have to try and neatly unpick all of these both sides and uh, then we'll reassess with the new one. on now uh, I'm gonna have to straighten a bit of these but I'm gonna have to do it on it because you can't um, it has to go around the pulley and around the frame of the um, the saw bench at the same time before you can join it um, so I might just try and do it in situ all right um, so that's done for the minute um, I'm just gonna load up some tools and we'll go back out to the uh, saw bench this 
belt back on. Um, don't know how well this is going to go. I might not film this whole thing because this might take a while. Um, just because you're going to join it in place. Just uh, do this off camera. Um, I'm in front of you anyway, and you probably can't see anything. I'll bring it back when I've got it back on. I'll tell you how long it takes, honestly. You never believe it, but that literally took 30 seconds uh, after I turned the camera off. Um, I found the best way to do it was close the belt up like that, um, and that obviously gives the most amount of room, and it just popped straight through. Um, it was really easy. I was using um, pointy nose pliers and just kind of popping it through. Um, I didn't even have to hit it, but it goes through really easy. I'm actually going to leave this um, inch or so um, just outside um, and fold it back. That's how my last one was and it kind of makes a little bit of a tick noise occasionally when it hits the um, pulley or something but um, yeah I, I don't really want to trim it too short and I don't want it to work itself out or get in up here somewhere and flick open the thing. The other thing I might do now is just I'll grab a hammer and just seat this down a little bit. Now it's um, because when I, I had to actually straighten these on the inside, I actually kind of had to turn every single one straight just so then they would mesh. They were kind of, every single one was skewed a little bit so there wasn't enough room and I had to turn it straight so then it would fall in between the tooth. Um, and because of that, um, it kind of did bring the uh, little teeth on the other side um, out a little bit. So I'll just hammer that down a little bit now and I'll bend these over and we should be good. I've just adjusted the uh, so this one this one is when it's in the stowage so up it will go against this one it goes loose this is how tight you want the belt so what you do you lower the three-point linkage down and then you put it in reverse and you back these legs into the ground and what that does is it pulls all this back up to what if you've got this nut set to which is there for your tension of your belt so I've done it with that loose uh, got adequate tension on the belt then done this up to where that is so it can never over tension the belt you can just put it in reverse back up you're all good this one I've backed all the way off to the eye so then when it lifts up it goes nice and loose um, apart from that I've just got to probably re-grease it um, I'll just double check that nut before I actually use it um, I've done it up pretty tight it won't really go any tighter as it is. I might just um, put it in gear and um, try and do it again with the big shifter. Um, apart from that, the Fergie started up first go. Um, so yeah, real happy with that. Um, yeah, all right, I'll set you up and we'll just do a quick run up and run down and uh, yeah.
there you go. Um, well, that's about all we'll do for today. Um, we've got the saw bench on, we've got to put back together, we've got the new blade on, um, I've got the Ferguson running, started up first go, uh, which is really impressive. I did start it on a 12 volt battery, they start a lot better on that. Um, started within, you know, a second of cranking, which is really good. Um, a couple of things to fix up with this, I'm just going to work out why the belt isn't running um, very true, just going to grease it up and I'm just going to put it in gear with the belt tight and um, just re-nip up that, um, that nut on the side of the belt. Um, okay, so there you go, that's it for today. Uh, my name's Terence, this has been Rust Iron Ranch and uh, we'll see you next time.